Support Move University in the production of more video tutorials by making a financial contribution or by getting yourself one of these t-shirts. Details under the Support Move section on MoveUniversity.com. The link will be in the description below. Thank you and enjoy. Okay, next up we got density. So what is density? Well, before we can talk about density, we have to talk about two other things, and those are mass and volume. What is mass? Well, we mentioned it earlier in, in actually the first video, mass and volume, actually. Uh, but we talked about how we'd figure out kind of what they mean based on how they were measured. So mass is basically the amount of matter something contains. It's kind of a funny definition. It's kind of weird. It's like, well, we said that matter is anything that has mass and volume. And then we define mass as the amount of matter something contains. That doesn't really get us anywhere if we don't know what one or the other is. Uh, mass, though, is is often measured in uh, grams or kilograms, which kind of helps us understand what's going on with this. So um, mass, it's, some, it's very, very important to, to, to remember or to know that mass is a constant value. And the reason why is because it's measured on a scale or a balance, which I've kind of actually drawn over here. So if you've seen a scale or a balance, it's like the traditional sort of way it looks. Um, Things are, are, or ma things are massed when you basically have a scale or a balance. If you put maybe a one kilogram block on this side, right, one kilogram block here, and it'll, it'll bring this down, right, um, if this side is empty. So what you have to do is you have to add stuff over to the other side until, until the, the scale is balanced, right, until they're both level, right. And so, if we say that this thing, this one block, is one kilogram, anything that balances this scale with that one kilogram is one kilogram as well. It has one kilogram of matter. So we define this thing based on a standard. And there's actually this standard, like this little, uh, this little platinum iridium cylinder. I'll even write that down. Platinum iridium cylinder that's kept in France. That's the standard for for the one kilogram. Um, so we we measure things based on that. So you can imagine that mass is a constant value. Whether you have this scale on Earth or on Mars or on Pluto, no matter where you are, one kilogram is one kilogram because whatever you have has to balance out. So it's a constant value measured on a scale. So the mass the mass if you take a mass here on Earth, it's uh, it's the same as it's the same mass as it would be anywhere else. Um, weight, however, is a force because because there's like this this question of you know what's the difference between mass and weight is that weight is a force it's not a constant value that's the same everywhere um, weight is a force that's actually equal to um, mass times the acceleration due to gravity oops the acceleration due to gravity and it varies depending on the acceleration due to gravity so that basically just describing the gravitational pull. Uh, gravity on Earth is different than gravity on Pluto. In fact, even the, the gravity maybe in California is like at, you know in the valley in California is different than the the gravitational pull on the top of Mount Everest. So uh, maybe it might not be crazy different, but the point is that what I weigh on Earth is not what I'd weigh on Pluto because the acceleration due to gravity is different. But whatever my mass is here on Earth, my mass would be the same on Pluto or anywhere else. Um, so this is an important concept. And so when you're taking the mass of something, you're actually massing it. You're not weighing it. Weighing it would be trying to find the weight, right? Um, but I, I mention this here because um, in labs, laboratories, we're, we're always taking the mass of things, even though we say, you know, weigh this or weigh that or take the weight of this. You're not really taking the weight if you're finding a measurement in, in for, for mass. You're actually massing it, but nobody actually says massing. So just in case you're curious, it's just the technical thing to say is that when you're taking the weight, you're weighing something, when you're trying to find the mass, you're massing it, but nobody says massing. Okay, now that we've discussed mass, let's talk about volume. Volume is the amount of space an object occupies or takes up. Um, and one of the, uh, the – volume actually is, is something that I think a lot of people have learned by the time they're like you know, even in elementary school, middle school, high school. Um, volume is, is something that people pretty much know. Um, so that should be a review as far as that idea. Um, one thing that's important to mention, though, is that is a really, really important conversion factor for 
uh, volume measurements is that um, one milliliter equals one cubic centimeter. That's super, super important when you have to convert from milliliters or liters or kiloliters or deciliters to any sort of cubic measurement, which we'll actually show an example later. <coughs> so um, what is density? Well, now that we've talked about mass and volume, density is defined as mass per unit volume. So mass divided by volume, which of course can be represented by D representing density, equaling m over v, which is, which of course represent mass and volume respectively. Sometimes you might see it represented as rho equals m over v, and rho is just, um, a, a, you, that's something that you'll usually see as representing density in physics, and I think that's because um, the d is kind of for a distance or displacement. Um, so you might see rho, you might see d, depending on you know, who your teacher is, who your professor is, or whatever, uh, or what class you're taking. Anyway, there's this classic question of um, what weighs more, a ton of bricks or a ton of feathers? And the answer is neither, right? Some people are inclined to say bricks over feathers. And that's not the case. A ton is 2,000 pounds. A ton, 2,000 pounds. If we said, you know, a, th a, kilo a thousand ki kilograms of bricks or a thousand kilograms of feathers, they would have the same mass, right? But what's different is the amount of space they would take up. If you have a ton of bricks versus a ton of feathers, the ton of bricks, you wouldn't need that many bricks to get to a ton. But to get uh, a bunch of feathers together to to have a, a weight of one ton, that, that's a lot of feathers. They would take up a lot of space. So the idea here is that bricks are more dense than feathers. They have more mass per unit volume, per amount of space they take up. Um, so when we have this equation, density equals mass over volume, um, basically if you know, there are three, three values, right? There's the density, mass, and volume, and if you know two of them, you can find the third. So this equation here, or these two in red, um, basically if, you, if you're trying to find density, it's solved for density, plug in the mass, plug in the volume. If those two are the known values, you can find the density. If m is unknown, you solve for m. So you multiply both sides by v, and you get m equals... Uh, volume times density. If V is unknown, you would multiply both sides by volume um, and then divide by the density. Or if you have this one, M equals VD, divide both sides by density, and you have volume equals mass over density. Right? So um, basically you can rearrange this equation depending on what you're trying to solve for. Now the common units when it comes to density, uh, the, common, the ones I see most often are grams per milliliter, um, or grams per centimeter cubed, uh, kilograms per uh, meter cubed. Those are the ones I see commonly. But any mass unit over any volume unit can work as density because of the definition of density being mass divided by volume. Okay. Now, something to pay attention to or to know is that volume can change with changes in temperature and pressure which means that density changes with temperature and pressure as well. If density equals mass over volume, and the temperature and pressure differences can have an effect on the volume, then that's going to change density, right? Temperature and volume don't have an effect on mass uh, in the way that they do on, on volume. But if volume changes, density changes. But if, assuming uh, temperature and pressure are constant, um, density uh, is a physical property of a particular substance. So, so, so if you have a constant temperature and a constant pressure, then density density will be a constant value for that substance, and it'll be independent of the amount of substance, making density what's called an intensive property. An intensive property is a property independent of the amount of substance. So, so an example would be if you have one gallon of water, right, at 20 degrees Celsius and one atmospheric pressure versus one cup of water at that same temperature and same pressure, they're both going to have the same density because their temperature is constant and the pressure is constant. So water has a particular density at that temperature and pressure, and regardless of the amount that you have, whether you have one gallon of water or one cup of water, the density will be the same in both cases. The density is the same in both cases. And so because that density 
Density as a property is not dependent on the amount. It's called an intensive property. Uh, the, the opposite case would be an extensive property. So that's a property that is dependent upon the amount of substance, which, you know, since we're talking about density, we can think about mass and volume separately, each as extensive properties. If you have 10 grams of water versus 15 grams of water, those are not the same, right? Those do not equal each other. 10 grams of water is different than 15 grams of water. So mass is an ex extensive property. Volume is the same way. 5 milliliters of water and 20 milliliters of water are not the same thing. They do, they do not equal each other. Right? So that's, those are extensive properties separately. But when they come together in this formula, they create density, which is an intensive property. Okay. One question I think is really important to ask is how does one convert between various density units? This is something I know that people have a lot of trouble with, and the best way I can do this or explain this is with an example, and basically remind you about how one milliliter equals one cubic centimeter and how that's a super important conversion factor when it comes to density. So this question says, or this problem says, convert 7.13 grams per milliliter to kilograms per cubic meter. So let's do that. If we have 7.13 grams per milliliter. Okay, I need these grams to become kilograms and these milliliters to become meters cubed. Okay, I don't know how to go from milliliters to meters cubed quickly, So, but I do know how to take grams and turn them into kilograms very easily. I want to cancel these grams and turn them into kilograms. That's pretty easy. I can just take this, this grams, I know I want to cancel that, so I'm going to put grams on the bottom and kilograms up top. And then I know that there are, um, that kilogram, kilo means a thousand grams, so there's a thousand grams in one kilogram. So that's my conversion factor here, okay? Um, so what that'll allow me to do is that'll allow me to cancel the grams. And now I basically have kilograms over milliliters. That's still not what I want. That's close because now I have the kilograms, but I still got to turn these milliliters to meters cubed. So I don't know the direct conversion there, but I do know that I can turn one milliliter into one centimeter cubed because, oops, that more on to the right there, centimeter cubed. I know that one milliliter is one centimeter cubed, so I can multiply by that conversion factor to cancel out the milliliters. Now I have kilograms per centimeter cubed. Okay, we're getting closer. But now I don't want centimeters cubed. And I don't know how many centimeters cubed there are in meters cubed, but I do know that there are 100 centimeters in one meter. And I put the centimeters up top here so that they can cancel with the, with the centimeters down here. Um, but that's still not right. That would only cancel, if I put this centimeters up here, that would cancel with one of these centimeters, and I have centimeters squared down here, and then meters, that wouldn't be right. What I do, though, once I've set up this conversion factor, I'm going to take each of these numbers and, and, and their units and cube them. So I'm going to cube this entire thing here. Okay, so I'll take 100 cubed and centimeters cubed, and that'll become 1 million centimeters cubed on the top. And on the bottom, one cubed is just one, and then meters cubed, that'll be one meter cubed on the bottom. Okay. So what I have now is now I can cancel out the centimeters cubed. The centimeters cubed, oops, I'm going to put that in red. The centimeters cubed up here will cancel with these centimeters cubed down here. Now my final answer will have whatever units are left over, which are going to be kilograms on the top and meters cubed on the bottom. Now all I have to do is multiply all the numbers on the top and divide all the numbers on the bottom. So 7.13 times 1 times 1 times 1 million. And once I find that, divide by 1 milliliter, divide it by 1,000 grams, and then get that answer, divide by 1, get that answer, divide by 1. And what I end up getting is 7,130 kilograms per meter cubed. And so I hope you can try that with with other examples that are similar to this. Hope that video was helpful. Thank you for watching. If you found that video helpful, be sure to hit it with a like and don't forget to subscribe if you haven't already. Also, be sure to share the video with anyone who you think might find it helpful. Thanks and happy studying.